Julio Cesar Martinez versus Angelina Cordova. 12 rounds for Martinez's WBC flyweight title. Very interesting matchup. 50-50 fight, in my opinion. Let's get into it. Let's start with Julio Cesar Martinez. 20 wins, 2 losses, 15 wins by way of knockout. I think Martinez has had a very interesting career, man. I mean, anytime that you have someone who loses their first fight, right, and then finds a way to turn things around, is very interesting to me because that says a lot about the character of that person. After losing his first fight, he wins his next 18 straight Fights, a few controversial fights between Charlie Edwards along the way and uh, Mick Williams Arroyo, but he became a champion in 2019 when he beat Christopher Rosales, stopping him in the ninth round in a all action pack fight. I don't think I've ever seen a boring Martinez fight now that I think about it. He's all action every single round. You know, it's a lot of volume. You know, it's lack of defense, but he punches in great combinations, man. He sits on his punches. He'll sit in the pocket all day, every day, if that's where the fight needs to go. Against Rosales, man, the pace was crazy, and he stood right in front of him, right on his front foot, and just was fighting on the inside, right on the pocket with both men. He got clipped cleanly with some shots uh legs looked a little shaky but he just kept throwing and kept coming forward the dude is just relentless man is the word that comes to mind and he's slick right and he's sneaky with his uppercut he was having success uh rosales took a lot of punches and eventually it just became too much in the ninth round when it got stopped he got hit with like nine cleanly consistent connected shots it, it's just crazy work, man. Crazy work rate from Martinez. After that, he won his next three fights. Eventually stepped in the ring with the legend, so to speak, Chocolatito Roman Gonzalez. And it was a fight that he kind of met his match, man. I, I thought Gonzalez fought hard all the way through the fight. But Chocolatito, man, he was just a, a bit more too accurate. Uh, sharper that night, especially in the second half of the fight. Chocolatito really started to impose his physicality and power precision, right? He caught Martinez with an uppercut in the sixth round that stumbled him, but he didn't hit the canvas. Martinez sometimes, man, like I get his style, right? He wants to be exciting, but sometimes he's too tough for his own good, man, and puts himself in positions and he doesn't really need to be in or sit in for too long. That got him in trouble against Chocolatito because once Chocolatito started going to the body and started letting his hands go a little bit more, it ju he just got overwhelmed, right? He's normally the, Martinez is normally the guy who is pressuring his opponents and having them fighting on the back foot. But that was a fight where he was fighting off of the back foot. He was getting caught with a bunch of different shots from different angles, right? He was staying on the ropes a little too much for me. And that costed him, right? Because he put himself between a rock and a hard place where he couldn't move and he became very stationary and Chocolatito being the veteran and as skilled as he is, the, the, the knowledge that he has over his time, he was able to take advantage of that. But credit to Martinez, man, he never gave up. He never gave in. He kept trying to fight, but he did lose that fight. After that, he fought Samuel Carmon, Carmona in a very close fight, man. Carmona isn't a big volume guy he's more about timing and accuracy but i thought on that night what made him so good was the thing that actually lost him the fight he didn't throw enough he when he did throw he was landing good clean shots that the judges were like whoa that's 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 a nice shot but he wasn't busier. He didn't throw enough. The volume wasn't enough to match up with Martinez. Carmona caught him with big punches, as I said, but it just wasn't enough, man. And he got outworked that fight. And it also doesn't look good from an optical standpoint when the judges are seeing you landing a couple shots here and there, but you're also retreating around the ring a little bit more. It just doesn't look good. They like the aggressor and Martinez. He's going to bring the volume. He's going to bring the pace. I didn't personally think that was his best fight. Honestly, I thought that fight uh, was just him not really using 
his intelligence to cut off of the ring. I thought he was just fighting with a little bit too much emotion and really just following the guy Carmona around the ring, man. Um, I wouldn't even have been surprised if that fight ended a draw or even Carmona winning. You could make a case for that, but Martinez would go on to win the fight. Now, in his most recent fight, he fought Ronel Batista, and I thought it took him a few rounds to really get going. It really wasn't until like the sixth round or so that Martinez was able to steer the momentum in his favor. Batista had a point deducted, I believe, in the fourth round. Martinez dropped him in the seventh round, and it was ruled initially a slip till they watched the replay where you saw that it was scored a knockdown. He caught him a few rounds later uh, with a shot that knocked out Batista's mouth. I think that was the 10th round. And you could kind of see, man, it was starting to really get to Batista, and things really started to sway into Martinez's favor. Shots started to connect a little bit more, and eventually he was able to close out the show in the 11th round where he caught Batista with an onslaught of shots, man, some looping shots, some lunging shots, body shots on the ropes, and he was able to close out the show and eventually got the win. Martinez is high energy, um, explosive action, but he's a flawed fighter defensively. And he gets hit often, but his work rate and volume kind of, he kind of uses that at his defense at times. His style though, man, you know, it, those styles kind of limited, man. You're not always going to be able to just walk through punches and take punches on the chin like that without being some type of defensively responsible and making that a part of your game plan. Um, so to this point, it's been working for him, but at some point, I think he's going to get caught, man. His defense does need to be better, and we'll see if uh, Cordova can take advantage of that. Let's talk about him. Let's talk about his opponent, Angelino Cordova. 18 wins, no losses, one draw, 12 wins by way of knockout. This is a great opportunity for Cordova to showcase his skill and his talent. His first 16 fights have been in Venezuela against, if I'm being honest, lackluster competition. Those guys did not have the best records. I wouldn't even say the majority of them had good records. He fought one guy throughout that time, and the best record was this one guy who had the record of 26 wins and 19 losses. Last year, he fought in his first fight, um, Axel Vega, where he won that fight by split decision. But from what I remember of that fight, he didn't win that fight. I thought Vega won that fight, honestly, kind of comfortably. Cordova was aggressive, yes, but he smothered his work most of that fight, man. Whereas Vega landed more of the cleaner eye-catching shots. I thought Vega's body work was excellent that night. And Cordova looked good in moments, in spots, but I don't think he did enough to win that fight. I thought Vega did enough. He fought a great fight, but we can only go on the outcome of what the judges make official. And Cordova got the nod. After that, he steps into the ring against... Um, Eniel Acosta, hmm. Cordova likes action. He likes to be in the mix. He's got good power. He's got good timing and moves well enough in the ring to try and keep the distance. He likes to lunge forward. He's looking for big shots. No doubt about that. The man is sitting on his shots. Uh, he doesn't throw a whole lot of jabs, right? Against Acosta, he was trying to push the pace early, right? Trying to walk him down, close the range, close the gap. Cordova is a busy fighter, right? But in the second round, Cordova got caught with a shot of Acosta that backed him up and had him retreating. Cordova got hit a bunch in that fight, man. I think he had a cut over his eye uh, as the fight went on. It didn't take too long, though, for both men to really start meeting each other at the center, right? Like three, four rounds. Those guys were getting busy. That's one of the great things about these lower weight division is they are not afraid to let the hands fly early. Like they, they, it's, it's, it's exciting fights. They may not get the respect, but man, they're exciting fights. Cordova sometimes, man, he's a little bit wild and misses big. And sometimes he's, he's an emotional fighter to me at times, right? He got a point taken away in the fourth round for punching in the back of the head something that he did in a couple rounds before, but he did learn from it and he did bounce back in that fifth round after the point was deducted and starting letting his hands go a lot more. He was pushing the pace and Acosta was trying to find his timing and trying to counter him effectively. I thought that fight had a lot of close rounds. Most of those rounds kind of looked very similar. Cordova 
was the much busier fighter, even with the point deducted. He just would do a little bit more. He made good adjustments. And I thought he felt the power of Acosta and didn't engage when he didn't need to, right? He tied up when times when he was hurt. He's smart enough to get himself out of trouble. He's a confident fighter. And I think the confidence and the aggressiveness helped him to win that fight. In the 10th round, though, he came in with his hands low and Acosta caught him plainly with a counter shot and could over lost his mouthpiece. And he was trying to get away, trying to show that he wasn't hurt, trying to retreat, right? But he did the smart thing when he's hurt. You tied him up, but you could tell that he was hurt. And then there was a time when the referee pulled him aside to put his mouth guard in, which gave him more time to rest. And he was able to recover and he was able to get himself really out of danger, man. But that was a, a, a close fight in a fight that he could have lost if that situation didn't happen. So it was a close fight, a fight that could have went either way. As I said, Cordova has some interesting tactics in his game plan but he's solid uh he's hungry and that's part of his strength man so who wins this is an interesting fight i don't think either of these guys are <laughs> particularly the greatest defensive wizards i think they both get caught and clipped they're both busy fighters but i think martinez is the busier fighter a little bit more calculated to some extent. And I think he'll punch more in combinations, right? I'm expecting a lot of volume. I'm expecting a lot of punches. There's a strong chance that this goes the distance, but I personally don't think it will. Cordova's chin is going to get tested. We've seen some volume of what Martinez can take and the shots that he's taken and the guys that he's fought. So it's going to be interesting to see what the game plan is here. What's the adjustments, uh, who, the energy distribution throughout this fight. But I'm leaning towards Martinez to get it done by late stoppage. But Cordova would not surprise me if he won this fight. I think these guys fight similarly in some ways. There's some similarities there. But I like Martinez to win this fight by late stoppage. What are your thoughts on this fight? Who do you have winning this one? Let me know in the comment section below. If you'd like to support the channel, there's a couple ways you can do so. You can like, comment, share, and subscribe to the channel. If you'd like to support by way of donation, you can find options in the description below. Also, my Cash App handle will be on screen as well. Any amount goes towards the growth of this channel. It will be greatly, greatly appreciated. I don't always get to do all the suggested videos you guys suggest in the comment section below. But if you become a member, those suggested videos rise to the top and I will do my best to get those done for you that week. Or if you'd like to become a member just to show a love and support the channel, that would be greatly, greatly appreciated as well. Shout out to everybody that continues to like, comment, share and subscribe to the channel, man. I appreciate each of you. So with all that being said, if you've been watching the video, this don't do me a favor and subscribe to the channel and we'll definitely see you next time.